Good day, Mun Mun. Welcome back. I would like to invite you today to join me in the forest. We are going to go on an adventure. We are going to explore a very special tree. And I'm going to ask you if you know what this tree is. I'll give you a hint. It is very important to our people. Let's go. So, as we head into the forest, we're coming across some very beautiful green branches. These are fronds. And this is the branch of the special tree I'm talking about. Do you know what tree I am? All right, maybe we identify this special tree by its branches. Maybe not. We might have to explore a little further. So we're going to step into the forest. First thing, when you're in the forest, you scan your area, scan the environment, because we are not the only creatures in the forest. There are other animals and you want to look around to make sure all is safe. Looks pretty safe, so I'm going to look a bit more closer. mystery of the special tree. First of all, I would like to show you my base. Down below I have roots and those roots were used to make baskets and our grandmothers, our aunts and our mothers would make nice beautiful baskets. But if you look closely at my bark, I am red and brown and as I get older I will get very large and tall, and my bark will start to turn gray. And if you look high above, I could be almost a hundred feet tall. What am I? So. I think you might have guessed what this special tree is. Yes, you're right, the cedar tree. Our people call the red cedar tree in our language the kapai, which is the sacred tree of life. Hoth to Squile, my friend. Today, we are going to go on a journey. We are going to travel from Quamalston to Chequasp. Chequasp is on the Sunshine Coast. And you can arrive in Chequasp by catching a ferry, taking a plane, or we can take our ko'oth, our canoe. Let's go. One of the things that I like to do when I go to a beach is to look at the pretty shells and the pretty rocks. Welcome to the village of Chequasp. Chequasp is located in present day Gibson's Landed on the Sunshine Coast and you only need to catch the ferry which is 35 minutes or you could have a really fun two hour paddle from Horseshoe Bay. Chequasp has been the village of the Squamish people forever, like we're talking thousands of years, even 10,000 years and more. And you can only imagine why people would live at such a beautiful location as this, and you only need to look around you. First of all, we have lots of shellfish to eat, and we have a lot of sea vegetables, which is the various types of seafood, and sea plants that our people would eat. But if you were to look out the point here, what you would see is a channel and amazing fishing grounds. 
so out towards Salmon Rock there, they say that there is a pink salmon run that comes into these waters every two years. But if you are look to look at the larger landform there, Knob Hill, Knob Hill was a lookout point for the village that existed here. And the watchman could stand on the top of that that hill and look up and down the coastline to see who is traveling in our waters. Chepesk was such an amazing area. It was what you would consider central to the Squamish people's territory. If a person wanted to travel up north to see their relatives in Stakaya, Roberts Creek, they could, or even travel further up to visit the Seashaw and Seashell or the other relatives in Paul River, the Tla'aman. But it'd be very likely that a lot of people would travel up to the House Sound area to see our relatives up in House Sound, such as the village of Tsukai. As Hatsumeitsa just told us, this was a village. And the people in this village used tools Archaeologists tell us about the tools that people used and the things that were left behind. And geologists tell us that this kind of dark rock would be black basalt. And somehow, with great skill and great knowledge passed down from generation and generation, people learned how to shape stones shape them and shape them and make them into weights for nets to make them into anchors for canoes to make them into scrapers to make them into projectile points to make them into little tiny arrows for bird points this was a tremendous skill and i have the deepest admiration for people who could do this i had to go to the store and buy a knife with money. They didn't. The people that lived in this village had that skill to make everything they needed themselves. When you find things like this on a beach, students, you must always leave them here where you found them. And we're going to carefully put each one of these stones back where we found them because we need to respect the work that people did and the great skill that they had. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. So we've talked a lot about the cedar tree, the kapai, our tree of life and I just wanted to share our story. It's a Squamish story. It's actually a story amongst many of our Salish tribes, but it's the story of why the cedar tree is sacred to our people. And it was said long ago there was a Siam, a chief, and he was very generous and very productive person. And him and his wife, the matriarch of the village, they lived a good life and they shared all of their resources and their food and anything that they had as a skill set they taught to the younger generations and therefore they lived a very good life and when they became elderly they were highly respected people and they eventually passed on to the spirit world and creator um, he had transformed the siam the chief into the papai, the red cedar tree, and he transformed his wife, the matriarch, into the yellow cedar. And that's why to this day, the cedar trees are continuously giving to our people, and it's why we show respect for the cedar tree. Our longhouses are also called our big houses. We have feasts and celebrations, and we come together as a people a community, and family. We are all family. We are one. No chop moth.
So I'm back at the kapai, the red cedar tree, because the red cedar tree, our tree of life, just has so much to offer our people and literally provided for our people from cradle to grave. And the reason why I say that is when our babies were born, we actually had a little papoose for them that was designed from the cedar tree. And when we lived our good lives and hopefully to elderhood, when we passed on from this physical world and went to the spirit world, our loved ones would put our, put our remains, our body into a cedar box, which was referred to as a mortuary box. But I'd like to focus a little bit more on the living and to examine this beautiful tree and share how we were able to create to harvest our building materials from the cedar tree and keep it living. And how we did that was what you refer to as a selective harvest. And we would acquire the planks from these big, beautiful cedar trees. I'm guesstimating this tree to be possibly maybe 50 years. As old as some of your parents or grandparents. But these trees, if you could imagine, live to a thousand years old and if they live to that age they are huge they're strong and healthy and that's what allowed us to take entire planks which are big boards by making an incision on the bottom going to the top and making another cut approximately 12 feet high however high you need it and using wedges from the hard maple or yewood tree and wedging out a plank and with the trees being so large and healthy you could possibly take two planks or even three planks and those planks would be used for our houses more specifically our longhouses and our longhouses that were utilized in the winter time sometimes referred to as our big house were our big communal homes and we would use smaller houses for our spring and summer homes because our spring and summer homes were our harvest villages. But in the winter time, when all of our families migrated to Comalston, Stanley Park, um, here in Gibsons, we would potlatch for the winter. We'd invite our friends and our neighbors from the other tribes and we would host them throw big feasts and have big gatherings and celebrations and that's why the longhouse is so important to our people today where we have our weddings um, our celebrations and our longhouse winter dancing